Hey everyone, welcome back. Today we're stepping away from the normal bike building videos and getting a little bit more in depth with this quick how-to on restoring the left hand and right hand controls. So maybe some of you guys are like me and you're also fairly new to the restoration world and taking on something like this could be a little bit daunting as it seems to be a bit more of a finesse artistic skill than your usual teardown and rebuild. Uh, needless to say, you're right. Um, my first attempt at doing this, I failed miserably. I used the wrong paints, the wrong techniques, and it turned out even worse than when I started. Fortunately, there was a member on the Kawasaki Triple Forums, and she was kind enough to share her wisdom with me, and with her green light, I'm able to share her techniques in this video, and uh, hopefully save a lot of you guys some heartache, aggravation, and uh, get some more of these old controls looking brand new again. Now first up, before we dive right into the nitty gritty, let's talk about which paints to use. For my base, I used the trim clad semi gloss black along with the trim clad clear. And for the lettering, I used deco art acrylic paint. A uh, key note to mention that you must use clear and you must use acrylic paint for the lettering. Do not try to do it without either of these. I did that my first attempt and that is why I failed miserably. First up is the disassembly of the controls. Please be incredibly careful as there are lots of very fine delicate connections and small intricate pieces. I recommend taking lots of photos and bagging both left hand and right hand controls separately. This will all help with the reassembly. Now that that's finished it's time to remove the original paint. For this, I went back to the sandblaster using a fine glass media to get rid of all the paint and minimize any damage to the surface. For the base coat, I applied two coats of the trim clad satin black followed by one coat of the trim clad clear. This step is crucial before applying the lettering. And now for the fun stuff. To apply the paint, takes a lot of time and even more patience. To apply the paint into the lettering, I used a fine Q-tip and gently rubbed the paint in. To remove any excess paint, I used a combination of a damp paper towel that's been folded to create a sharp edge and a damp Q-tip. To achieve your desired results, you'll most likely have to repeat those steps numerous times. For your final step before assembly, please apply another two coats of clear to protect both the lettering and the existing paint. Before the final assembly, I cleaned all of the internal components using Evaporust. And here you have it guys, as seen at the beginning of the video, this is the finished result. I know I jumped through it rather quickly, I really hope I can show you more in depth step by step in a future video, but in the meantime I hope this helps and gets some of you guys down the right path. One last tech tip for you guys, this plastic sheathing that came on these controls can get dried and cracked over the years and it's really hard to find a good quality replacement for it. Fortunately, there's a website called Vintage Connections that specializes in vintage motorcycle, electronic connections, uh, you name it, they've got it, including this quality sheathing. I've used this on multiple projects. It comes in various diameters depending on the harness that you have to cover up. Uh, it works great. I recommend lubing up the cables first with dielectric grease um, before sliding it through. Either way, Great stuff, great product, and uh, it'll just help with the professional restoration at the end of the day. And thanks again for tuning in. Please click subscribe, leave your comments below. Until next time, ride safe.